Hi everyone, welcome to Clone Its. It's been a while since I've done a podcast episode, so here we go. You might hear my dog walk around, that's uh, totally normal. Uh, I'm in my living room today, I'm in a different location because it just felt like sitting on the couch and um, yeah, <laughs> that's it, that's why. So today I'm going to be talking about things I've been knitting on, things I'm thinking about knitting on. It's going to be a short one because I haven't been super productive, I feel like, but I've been super productive in other ways, meaning I've been producing a lot of videos and that takes quite a bit of time. So it takes away time for knitting, but it's still quite exciting. I have also a few projects in the works and um, yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you about one thing in particular. I showed you this uh, cowl when it was finished, but now the pattern is actually on Ravelry. It's been published, so I'm super excited to show you my, again, my uh, I Got Rhythm cowl. So this cowl for me is like perfect, oops, my, it's perfect at tapping down my hair, but it's a perfect stay up type of cowl. It's knit using um, Cory Worsted uh, in the color Lise from La Bien Aimée, and the uh, yarn that changes color is called Feederbrook Farm and it's the Entropy DK in the color Luminous Flux. I really really like this cowl. I like the way it sits because I don't like a droopy cowl and uh, I actually designed it in order to uh, use it as a teaching tool to teach people how to knit Fair Isle. So it's got super rhythmical Fair Isle motif, which is why I called it I Got Rhythm. <laughs> uh, for those who are new to my channel, I am a full-time knitting teacher. In I have a French knitting channel that where I teach most of the time, and I also teach in person. But I also used to be a swing dance instructor. So yeah, all the jazz, all the jazzy, you know, references, I'll take them. So. I got Rhythm. It's on Ravelry. I'll put the link down below in the des description box. I just wanted to give you a little um, heads up of it being available because I don't design much, but when I do, I'm pretty proud of my stuff. <laughs> so here we go. Um, in the meantime, since the last time I saw you, I also finished another cowl. It was the year of cowls. I never made cowls and all of a sudden I was just all about the cowls. So this one is finished. It is The Shift by Andrea Mari, and it is knit flat mosaic knitting and you then seam it up in the back. My seaming is not perfect. Actually, my cowl is not perfect. I didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> I used it as a guideline. Um, in her uh, pattern, she uses multiple different colors of spin cycle yarn. Spin cycle is the yarn that you see change color throughout this cowl. So I used one ball of spin cycle dyed in the wool in the color Heliotrope, which is the colorway that's exclusive to Montrico here in Quebec. Um, and um, instead of using multiple colors of spin cycle, I decided to just use one background color. I, and I used a background color in a pink. It is from Bleu Poussière, and it's the Brindy base in the color Alexis on Fire. And then I also held it double with a mohair, and it's really fun because when you, you look at it dead on, it looks quite pink. And then when you shift it a bit, then you can see all this mustardy, golden... <laughs> I love it. So... The, the hue of it changes depending on how you're looking at it because I'm holding the pink double with a mohair that is that color, golden brown. And it's, it's uh, I believe it's called Honey Mustard. It's the um, mohair from Espace Trico. Uh, let, me, let, let me find it for you. It's their own colors. It, the, their brand is called Bon Trico in, uh, or Happy Knitting on their website. And it is the uh, mohair base, which is called Bliss Mohair. And the Bliss Mohair in color, this one, Honey Mustard. I was right. So Honey Mustard. 
And uh, I just kept knitting until I was gonna run out. So I basically ran out of the spin cycle yarn a tiny bit before I was done decreasing. The shaping of this thing is completely funky. You don't know what it's gonna look like until you actually sew it together. It's really warm. Um, and uh, I like it a lot. I wore it uh, with my uh, spring coat here in Quebec. Like you never, right now in Quebec, I don't know if it's the same thing where you live, but springtime here is like, you wake up, it's like three degrees. Then at noon, it's like 17 degrees. Then at four, it's 24. Then it goes back down to three. Like it's, it's ridiculous. So you never know how to dress. So having layers and having stuff that you can on and off, on and off, um, makes life a little bit more, you know, manageable here. So these kind of cowls are great for that because you can just throw them on without having the big shawl. And, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that this one will be worn quite a bit once the weather gets really cold again and I can wear it inside. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I'm an inside knitter, knit stuff all the time. Like I, I wear a hat most of the winter even inside and uh, I think a cowl might be the new thing that I wear. Speaking of uh, Andrea Maori, what I'm wearing right now is an Andrea Maori sweater as well. It is the wool and honey sweater by Andrea Maori and it is uh, quite oversized dolman sleeve garter stitch with this beautiful detail on the yoke. And uh, I knitted according to pattern, except that once the yoke was done with this, that super pretty stitch, I uh, changed the pattern to knit it flat instead of in the round because I did not want to knit garter stitch in the round on an oversized garment forever and ever in a pretty tight um, gauge. Uh, garter stitch in the round is just, you know, one row Knitwise, one row pearl, one row knit, one row pearl. And because it's garter, it shrinks quite a bit. So you have to knit a lot longer than you think in order to achieve the length that you want. So I basically knit in the round until the yoke was done. And, I, and then I separated for the sleeve. And then I started knitting back and forth so that the seam is in the back. Because on the original sweater, the seam is in the back anyway. There's always... There's always going to be a seam when you knit garter stitch in the round because when you switch round, it, it creates this seam. And so I feel like my seam that I ended up doing uh, because I knit flat does not look more unattractive than a regular knitting in the round garter seam. I did the same thing for the sleeves. I knit them flat and then I seamed them up. But like it's literally invisible. Uh, seeing as though I also used black yarn, it makes it even more um, difficult to see. And I really love like the tight crew neck. I've had a really great time with Andrea Mari's patterns, like her sweaters fit me quite well. And um, I'm really excited to knit more of hers because I'm pretty sure I'm going to knit her new release. She has a new hoodie that came out that's called The Traveler. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna knit that one too. And if she has, it's a hoodie, but she also has the crew neck option and her crew neck option is quite close to the neck, which is also something that I very much appreciate. Uh, the yarn for this is a Holskarn Super Soft, which is a yarn that you can find online in that's it's sold in cones or in, I believe it's also sold in 50 grams, 50 gram balls. And it is a light fingering. So when you knit with it, because it's a cone yarn, it is quite uh, thin. And you think, oh my God, this is going to be so see-through. It's impossible, blah, blah, blah. And then you wash it. When you wash it, it blooms beautifully because all the oils, like there's machine oil inside the yarn. And so all the oil gets out and the, the, the it's still a little, you know, see-through if I pull on it. It is not a very thick fabric, but because it is 100% non-treated wool, it's quite warm. And uh, I would absolutely knit with that yarn again. Uh, it, it, I bought a cone and <laughs> I've knit a full sweater. Plus, what else did I knit with it? I knit a few black hats where I was holding it double or triple even. And I still have a ton. Like there's so much of it. If anybody wants black yarn, tell me.
I'm here. I have some. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? So last weekend I went to a festival, uh, an, uh, a knitting festival in Rouen Noranda, which is quite far uh, from my house. And I was going uh, in an um, electric car. So we had to stop a few times to uh, fill in the electric car. So it was uh, easy. Like I, I left, I think we, we were in the car for about, you know, 10 hours total to go there. And then same thing to come back. So I decided that I was going to knit a sweater for my daughter. She's seven. She is seven and she asked me for a sweater. And I said, okay, no problem. I she wanted all the unicorn colors. So I pulled out what I had in my stash that could fit with what she wanted. She wanted stripes. Um and I said, you know what? I'll try to knit it while I'm away. I was leaving Friday morning. I was coming back Monday night. I figured I could probably knit a DK weight sweater for a child spending that much time in the car. Um and I did. So here it is. I had to pry it from her hands and body because she's been wearing it nonstop since we left. Uh, since we left. Since I arrived and I gave it to her. She's been wearing it nonstop. So it is a raglan, a basic raglan. I took a free pattern from uh, Ravelry, which is called Good Old Raglan by Twisted Knitwear. I made the size 7 to 8 which is perfect. My daughter is a seven-year-old. She's a very small seven-year-old. And she also wanted it to be a little bit cropped. She said, a little bit cropped. That's what she said. And then she also wanted sleeves that go to her uh, to her elbow crease. So yeah, pretty proud of it. It's, it's very classic, you know, nothing special raglan, except for the fact that uh, there's big stripes. Um, this yarn is the, the DK weight um superwash merino and nylon that i got in a yarnable box so i have a yarnable uh affiliate link uh, that i use on my french channel i can put it down here so if you want to purchase a yarnable box those are subscription boxes that you receive every month you receive a skein of yarn and you receive like a pattern to go with it and some information and some extra little goodies uh so i had one skein of that and I had, and that was a February box, if you're wondering. And this other, the, all the other stripes are basically one ball of uh, Knit Picks Chroma fingering. Chroma fingering is a single ply um, superwash wool and nylon that changes color. And uh, it... I decided to hold it double, obviously, because this is a thing. Uh, it's a fingering, and I was using it with a DK. And I'm just trying to see what color um, I used because I can't remember. Chroma fingering. Uh, that yarn is available like everywhere, right? So if you're, I'm seeing everywhere. I don't know about Europe, but in the states and in Canada, it's Pegasus colorway, obviously. I said that it was a unicorn color and it's Pegasus. <laughs> so I was holding two strands at a time and I didn't really care about matching the colors. I just took one end from one, one from the middle of the ball, one end from the outside of the ball and I started knitting and it did what it had to do. And that's it. Um, I had a hundred grams of that as well. And I had made a swatch for another video on my French channel. Um, so I had a little bit less than 100 gram and literally I came to the end of the second sleeve and I was short two rows. Like those two rows of purple should technically be teal, but I didn't have enough. And I didn't want to wait to get home to unravel the swatch that I made. So I just did it in purple and nobody's ever going to know except the people I tell, which is you. My daughter will never notice. Um, I It is not washed and blocked. She wanted to wear it right away, so she did. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to have to um, force her to uh, part with it for a few more days so I can wash it and let it dry. I don't think I'm going to put it in the machine. Uh, I know it's technically machine washable, but when I can, I prefer just doing it by hand, you know just to make sure that it stays pretty forever and ever and ever, even though she's only going to wear it probably this season and I'm going to have to find someone else to wear it. Um, so yeah.
this one is super nice. She's very happy. If you are on my Instagram, which is uh, Claude Rico with an S, C L O T R I C O T S, uh, I have a reel of me making that sweater, and her reaction at the end is, Mwah! she's amazing. She's very much in love with it. So that's what I, so all the, the links for patterns and yarn, if I have a link, will be in the description box below. If there are links to Nipix, they are affiliate links. I want to mention it because people like to know. Um, knitting is my job. It is my full-time career. So I do have quite a bit of, you know, ways to earn money that are not necessarily just teaching. That being said... I went to a knitting festival, so I uh, got some yarn. So real quick, I'm gonna show you what I got, um, and I know I I won't spend that much time talking about all the yarns that are only available in Quebec because they are only available in Quebec. But I know that for some of you that come to event events in Quebec, when there's some like there's uh, f there's Knit City Montreal that's happening at the end of May. And a uh, bunch of people are going to be there. So if, if you're coming there and you're English speaking, then it's nice to know of things that you might find there, right? And then there's Twist Festival that also has a, quite a big uh, group of people coming that have a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, um, exposant, which exposant in English, um, booths, uh, people showing their stuff at booths. So w the one thing I bought that's yarn at the event I was at was this. I, I just I just couldn't resist. Like, look at those colors. This is Lélène Mayapar. They are actually going to be as well at... They're going to be at Knit City Montreal. They're going to be also at Knit City Vancouver. So that's quite exciting. They're from here. And this is their BFL base. It's called Steel Sock. Five minis, 75% superwash, blue face Lester. So BFL and 25% nylon, 20 grams each. It is going to be magnificent socks and it is called Pierre Précieuse, which means precious stones or gems or, you know, that's, you can tell just by looking at the colors, what it's inspired by, right? Uh, jewels, jewel tones. So this is going to be on my needle soon when I want to make socks. And I started a new thing because... I got some yarn and I really, after making my videos on, uh, on patterns to knit this summer, if you haven't seen it, um, I'll put it in uh, the description as well. Um, there's one in particular that was, I was itching to cast on. And when I found this yarn, I thought it was meant to be, it had to be done together. So this is, um, yarn from Fibrani. I just noticed that I bought the color that's the color of her um her tag I actually didn't buy it and that I, I did not buy it she gave it to me which is amazing and i thank you very much annie for this so it's fibrani and she's located in huayna and she, this is the base numa which is 70 percent baby alpaca and 30 percent silk and it is a lace weight so it has 800 meters 874 yards but would you please look at this? Like the color is so pretty. It's going to go really well with my tone, I think. Like there was some very pretty super light pinks at the event that I was like really itching to, to take with me. But I feel like too light of a pink kind of washes me out. But this is just... So I'm holding it double to create a fingering weight so I can knit. A tank top. So this one's going to be a little tank top. And it is the Gelato tank top by Gabrielle Vizina. It is available in English and French. And uh, I thought that the alpaca and silk was going to be super drapey and soft. And I would be wearing it directly on my skin. And it would feel like heaven. So it's difficult to see right now with like the sheen quite shiny obviously but it has those little bobbles and lace uh center and uh i can't wait to keep knitting it i can't wait to wear it it fits with my lipstick today it's like hello
dog barking paws. I never know if actually done. Okay. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. All right. So yeah, I'm, I'm, this is my first summer knit of the season. It's very exciting because I have a lot of summer knits that I want to do. So Fibrani, beautiful. Can't wait to keep going. And I also bought brand new swivel cords from Chiaogu. I'm a big, big Chiaogu fan. And they had those swivel cords, which means that the joint swivels here and the cord stays put. I am not 100% sure about them yet. I'm, you know, I'm a red cord Chiaogu user. And the problem is that because the swivel cord swivels in its joint, the joint cannot be as tight as the other cord. So when I try to push my stitches through, it kind of catches a little bit. I don't know if it catches because I'm using a lace weight yarn. So I'm going to keep testing it and I'm going to give you my real true... Um, you know, feeling about it once I've knitted a bigger weight yarn with these needles before I decide if I like them or not. Obviously, they fit with regular Chiaogu needles, which I adore. Those are a must for me. Um, and this is a 3.25 millimeter needle. I'm doing this pattern according to the pattern right now, and I'm knitting the smallest size, hoping that it's going to be quite... Uh, it's going to be like zero negative, uh, zero ease at the bust. And maybe I'll do a little A-line um, shaping on the body. I will see. I'll try it on as I go. And I'll have a better idea of what I want to do with the lower part of that tank top. So I think that's that for today. It's not much, but it is what I have. Um, I will continue posting other videos on my channel. So stay tuned. There will be this video podcast that will keep going. There will be some more other videos that are just, you know, educational material. I know people seem to be enjoying my swatch video uh, right now. Um, and uh, I also plan on making on this channel an actual uh, audio podcast. So I want to make an audio podcast so we can talk about things without necessarily needing the visual part of it because when we do a video podcast like this I'm showing knitting so it's really it has to be video um but there's a new feature on fate on YouTube that allows to do a, an audio podcast it will have video but the video will just be there for if you want to watch it but it'll be an audio like a listenable podcast if you have subject that you would like for me to cover in an audio podcast let me know because I do appreciate walking around and listening to podcasts is a thing that I love doing and I remember listening to a knitting podcast way back when and I was like my favorite thing to do when I was out and about with my with my dog I would put on the knitting audio podcast and it was just so much fun to hear people talking about yarn techniques stuff that's happening so do let me know if that's something that interests you it's going to be on the same channel you're going to see it whether you want, you're interested in watching it or not is a different thing. And uh, yeah, if you liked this video and you want to know more about the things that I just talked about, maybe you want to watch this little video, which is the um, summer patterns to knit in 2023. And uh, I'll see you next time. Happy knitting! <laughs>